Thank you for tuning in again this week. This week marks the beginning of Pride Month, and throughout this month, Montgomery County will be celebrating and honoring the LGBTQ community. To mark the beginning of Pride Month, I raised the Pride flag in downtown Silver Spring this morning. I want to thank the community members that came out, as well as our red shirts who are there and for all they do in Silver Spring beyond that. I look forward to joining Council Vice President Evan Glass and the County Council next Tuesday for our County Pride flag raising here in Rockville. One of our county's greatest attributes is our commitment to inclusion and that everyone, no matter what their race, religion, ethnicity, sexual orientation, or gender identity, can live their lives without the bigotry and the hatred that they face in many other jurisdictions. The work that we do on equity is very important to our LGBTQ community. Many who continue to deal with discrimination, isolation, threats of violence, and assaults on their freedom. As you have heard us say many times, Hate has no home in Montgomery County, and we're going to ensure that the rights and resources of all LGBTQ residents will continue to be protected. This year marks 10 years since Maryland became the first state in the nation to extend marriage rights to same-sex couples by popular vote. As we honor and celebrate our LGBTQ community during Pride Month, we must recommit and continue the fight for equality, inclusion, and protection of our LGBTQ residents. I encourage all residents to participate in Pride Month events, gatherings, and educational opportunities that the county government and our community partners will be hosting throughout the month. In our COVID update, experts tallied 40 million travelers by air and by car over this last holiday weekend. Airports say they're back to pre-pandemic sized crowds, but the pandemic is still a concern. We've seen case rates rising steadily here in Montgomery County for the last few months. Now there seems to be a plateau, but our case rates remain the highest in the state, even though we continue to have the lowest test positivity. Our hospitalization rate has increased 25% in the past two weeks, but we are seeing a positive sign that the percent of hospital beds in use by COVID-19 patients statewide is now declining. We remain in CDC community level medium, but we have some of our neighbors to the north of us that are currently in high community level. Although we are seeing better news this week, we must remain vigilant. The incoming B4, BA4 and BA5 could reverse these trends. They appear to dodge some of the immunity generated by BA1 and BA2 infections. So people infected with earlier versions of Omicron could still contract the more recent subvariants. That will likely fuel more cases throughout the summer. We continue to strongly recommend everyone to get tested if they've been exposed or are feeling ill. And getting your booster shot is the best way to ensure a safer summer and it's as important as ever. We're seeing that those not vaccinated are catching the current variants at twice the level of those who are vaccinated. And these vaccines are just waning. So just because you were vaccinated last year, you need to get your booster this year. Finally, continue to carry that mask around in case you need it, such as in a crowded indoor space or on public transportation. Testing, vaccine, and masking, they all work, and it has helped and will continue to help keep everyone safe. Last week's mass shooting in Texas has required us to look at our readiness here in Montgomery County. We're making sure the parents, students, and teachers feel safe at school. This week, I joined Dr. McKnight, Board of Education President Wolf, Council President Albernos, and Chief Jones on a virtual press conference to address questions and concerns in our community. I appreciate the superintendent's efforts to organize and communicate clear information and tips for parents during these concerning times. I appreciated our police chief, Marcus Jones, making it clear that our police and school teams are in regular contact and constantly reviewing security. Our police officers are well trained to deal with this type of situation and they have a strong partnership with our schools to make sure that best practices are followed, including locked doors and monitored entrances. According to the Maryland Center for School Safety, all of MCPS schools have adequate law enforcement coverage, and we are the only large jurisdiction in the state that meets that criteria. It is important that we are prepared, and it is important that we push as much gun control as possible at the state and federal level. At the same time, we need to think about mental health support for young people. It was troubling to hear the Texas elementary school shooter's father talk about his child and the lack of access his family had to mental health resources. 
This should not happen anywhere in America. We must prioritize intervention as a preventative measure because when the police arrive and guns are drawn, it's already too late for everyone. People with mental health concerns often keep their struggles to themselves for a variety of reasons, including fear and embarrassment. If you suspect someone is suffering, don't wait for them to come to you. Directly ask them questions about, are they having suicidal ideas? Are they thinking about hurting other people? There are many resources out there for someone who's struggling, but when people are in crisis, connecting with resources can seem difficult. Our children need to talk to a teacher or an adult. If there's anyone out there that has no one to turn to or to talk to, or just is ashamed to share their struggles with loved ones, they need to call the county's EveryMind Mental Health Resources. EveryMind offers trained staff and volunteers for supportive listening, information, and resource referrals, and crisis intervention, including suicide assessments, through telephone, text, and chat services. Services are free, confidential, and available at everymind.org. And 24-7 phone service with Montgomery County Hotline is at 301-738-2255. This is a website and a phone number we want everyone to know and to share with others. The county also offers help for uninsured residents to obtain mental health resources. If you or anyone you know is needing mental health assistance and don't have insurance, please call 240-777-1770 and we will help you find the therapist. Additionally, I'd like to see this county return to having community mental health clinics where any resident whether they're insured or not, can get walk-in access to the help they need. These facilities were available in this county in the past, and they're probably needed now more than ever. I've asked our HHS team to look into partnerships, feasibility, and the costs that it would take to make this happen. Just like see something, say something, all of us can help a person in a mental health crisis. Having conversations really can save lives. Be prepared for severe weather. Last week, an EF1 tornado touched down in Olney, damaging some homes and automobiles, but fortunately, no one was seriously injured. This week marks the beginning of the 2022 hurricane season. We want to remind all residents to be prepared for storms, flooding, and potential loss of power. Due to climate change, our storms are getting more dangerous year after year. Our Office of Emergency Management recommends the following steps so that you can be best prepared. First, stay informed. Please make sure you're signed up for county text alerts. These alerts will inform you when we are in a severe weather watch and provide you warnings. And they can give you immediate notification when the National Weather Service is detecting bad weather in Montgomery County. Second, make a plan. Every family needs to have an emergency plan that everyone in the household understands. We have an emergency plan workbook template on our website that will help guide you through family planning. Third, make a kit. Every home should have an emergency kit ready in case the power goes out, especially for a long period of time. These kits include several days supply of food and water, flashlights, first aid kits, a battery powered or hand cranked radio, activities for your kids and supplies for your pets. Fourth, get involved and help your community in being prepared. There are classes that our emergency management department offers for free and make sure you look out after and check in on your family, friends, and neighbors, especially those who are elderly, live alone, or have limited mobility. Congratulations to the class of 2022. This week begins the start of MCPS graduation season, and I congratulate the class of 2022. These students were robbed of some of the best and most important years of their student life due to the pandemic, but they were resilient and they have succeeded and persevered, and their adaptation during unprecedented times will be recognized for many years to come. This is a very special class. We look forward to watching them do great things. Thanks for listening, and have a great week. See you again next week.